All right, let's bring in a security expert, Catch Onoluju, who joins us live via Skype from Abuja for more analysis on the growing tension between China and Taiwan. Good to have you join us, Mr. Onoluju. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, good to have you join us. Now, let's get your thoughts on, on, on why you think that um, China is now increasing its air activity in, in Taiwan. Well, you need to understand, uh, originally, historically, that particular strait, the U.S. 7th Fleet actually started from Canberra in Australia. It moved from Canberra to Quindau, from Quindau, and then went on to the Philippines and from there to Kinawa. And of course, when the Trump administration said it was pulling out from an international U.S. presence, that's when the France deal with Australia sustained. Now that Biden has come back and said America is back. And that's why nobody was surprised when it brought in the United Kingdom. And alongside that came with Australia. What you simply have seen is that the U.S. 7th Fleet has gone back to its traditional allies, Australia. That's where it came from. Now, you have Australia. You have United Kingdom. You have a reinvigorated Korea. And of course, you have Taiwan. And when you saw that particular skirmish, by the Chinese military maneuvers in the Taiwanese airspace, together with Okinawa. Now you can see why China is not very, very comfortable because the United States seems to be encircling China in the Pacific trip, and the Chinese are not happy mm. about it. And that's what you'll see him playing off. Of course, the French are not happy about the way the United States went about it in taking their deal from Australia and forcing Australia to look towards the United Kingdom to be supplied with a Trident class submarine and then killing the French initiative. And of course, all that followed through till now, the French are not happy, the Chinese are not happy, but the United States is back to the Pacific Rim because, as I said mm. earlier, China is a new Russia. All right, so, so let's look at a statement coming from the defense minister. Uh, that's a Taiwan's defense minister. Who, he said that um, China would be capable of mounting full-scale invasion of the island by 2025. Uh, and there are those who also believe that China is building towards uh, a complete takeover of um, Taiwan. What would it mean if, chi if Taiwan were to fall to China? <laughs> Yes. Can you come again? All right. So um, my question is, what would it mean um, if Taiwan were to fall to China when you consider the statement from the defense minister that China would be capable of mounting a full-scale invasion of the island by 2025? Taiwan will not fall to China. Taiwan, in principle, is like another Israel. Taiwan, in principle, is like another South Korea. Taiwan is like Okinawa. Taiwan is a United States outpost within the Pacific Rim. So if North Korea will not fall to the United States, I don't see how Taiwan will fall to the Chinese. So all you have to see right now is simply a recalibration and an expansion of the military build-up between the two superpowers. It is simply United States versus the Chinese. So the Taiwanese, the Koreans, Okinawa, uh, Canberra's new coming in right now, the United Kingdom, all these are allies of the United States, all masked up against the Chinese. Don't forget, China has built its navy right now to become something much bigger than we've ever seen. So the United States, of course, wants to contain the, uh, the Chinese People's Army. And what you're seeing right now, are the calibrations that actually we give the United States the urge that it does need. So what does it have now? The three strongest powers going back 100 years old in the Pacific frame. The United Kingdom that defeated China during the junk wars. And then Canberra, the original founding place of the U.S. 7th Fleet. 
and of course the United States itself back inside the Pacific Rim after the hiatus with the Trump attempt to pull out America's uh, interest uh, in the Pacific Rim. So mm. the U.S. is back. And, and we have seen that um, the China and the U.S. have had their first bilateral relations since, uh, since the last one in, in March in Alaska. Hopefully that douses the tension in, the, in that region. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, security expert, Kaj Anandujo. Thank you for having me.